worth leading for. That's the social media hashtag that students are using to spread awareness around the lack of free sanitary pads on campus. Up ourselves to heights we could never imagine. On August 9th, 1956, the Women's League of the African... The more you don't go to school, the more you no don't contribute no to the society. The issue of girls absenteeing from school due to lack of sanitary pads is a problem that has continued to block the education of adults. Does it come as a child. surprise that I dance? As if I have diamonds at the meeting of my thighs. Kulawami as a teenager here was was fine all along after what saying it's only like uh is in King as Tile is saying I caluba no duana so like, how come can you get pregnant? So it was hard for me, but Gazega Hamba or Hamba, I couldn't say Felix Catla, so finally, what's in Gamgele corner? Growing up, um, I grew up in a, uh, in a family of four girls um, just my mom and my dad, and it was very interesting growing up in the Transkai then because. A consistent question would be asked of my mom, how many kids do you have? And she'd say, four. And they would say, oh, girls. And they would say, oh, I was alang. Means that you haven't given birth yet. So I think that made me realize that being a child, a girl child, is very special. Something that my parents made us understand that being a girl child is very special. Um, my father, for example, always, always made it a point for us to understand, although we hear people say that about us, it doesn't mean that we can't do and be anything that we want. You know, <laughs> female issues or women issues, it's, it's, it's a very interesting thing because you will find men fighting for that as if they, uh, it's like they are left alone if we're talking about empowering female or empowering women. There is a saying that says, if you are educating a woman, you are educating the nation. So, and in most cases, you'll find that uh, female or women, they have triple role in, in, the, in, in the community. The reproductive role, a reproduction role, and they take care of the family. If you empower these women, these uh, women or female, it means you are empowering the nation because if they are educated, they'll be able to take care of, 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 of their families. And again, in South Africa, women empowerment issues or female, as you said, female empowerment issues, it's very top on the agenda. I think I've been very conscious. So when I heard one day driving to the airport, just driving to the airport, um, going to a business meeting. I was listening to the radio and I heard somebody speak about this in the context of Limpopo. I actually literally stopped the car. And I was like, what? And I remember the question that caught me from the woman. She said, imagine, how would your life have been different if your mom couldn't, have, couldn't afford pads? In the context of four girls, I mean, that hit me hard. If my mom couldn't afford pads and she's got four girls, where would I be? Never been able to get an education, missed school. We talk about the girls being pregnant. We talk about the girls doing what they do. And my feeling is that where are we as the women? 
Actually, my mom never talked about anything about my period ever since saying as a one my period, you understand why Michael was cool most okay. Then I'm as long as there are many challenges on my face now. Like but the only thing I had in July on is I was saying just stay away from boys. He even said if you touch a boy, like you see your blood will come up more, more, more. <laughs> so when I was growing up. I was staying with my grandmother because my mother was working in Johannesburg. So my grandmother didn't tell me anything about sex because, you know, even if she will try to tell you, she will say, you must not uh, uh, walk with the boys. And you will ask her, why am I not supposed to walk with the boys? Because at that age, you don't know anything. No, boys will impregnate you. So you'll be asking yourself, oh, by just walking, it means I'll get pregnant or, you know. And then you don't know because you were told not to walk with the boys. You were not told not to have sex with boys because it's sex will make you pregnant. So as a result, you, you know, you'll have sex and get pregnant. Once you get pregnant, they will start insulting you because you're a bad child. So meanwhile, they didn't play their role as parents. You see, when I grew up and four girls in the trans guy, my mom was working, but there was always somebody around. And I'm gonna say this, when I first got my first contraceptive, it was not because my mom took me to get my contraceptive. It's because a neighbor who's a friend of the family recognized that I'm growing up. And she recognized, fortunately, Toby Lena, who was my husband, coming to visit at the house. And she saw that she needed to take me to a place for me to be counseled about the choices that I can make. So do I say that crisis is mentorship? Um, the visibility of women who want to mentor other women? Um, you being able to go and drive to where Nomta lives, to see her context so that you understand that it's not that she likes men, it's the socioeconomic factors. My first period, my sister was there, so she helped me and give me the, the pet of her. As long as this is someone else, and of course, we're not going to see the understand that I'm not, but I can't tell you that I'm not So she gave me one, and the main niggas are all now. I said, This is a love for his cash and a party coming as cats. He is a simosa sekaya singer called Rice Rashley. Pella Wang Jalu say, Fanning is Nigel. I have to slam, I have to always stay clean if I'm on the period and stuff. So as in my period, I was going to call a young seven t-shirt in the end, and then he cut it two pieces, and then he fold in, then so the thing also was with the fit a painting in and then go to school. Especially, I started to do that when it was my exam. That is why I did that, because like I was have to go to school. But I'm a pet now, get a pala, and he got a little bit of So I go there and I feel a corner, I feel a gapala. But in a corner, I can get comfortable. I was not that much comfortable. So, but in a den, gaba right, that is what I was using. You know, sanitary towels are very important in empowering women and young girls. And in the issue of young girls, you'll find that most of them will, will miss out number of days in schools, you know, because if you are having your period, the cycles are not the same. If you are lucky, you, you go for three days and if you are not lucky it will maybe up to seven days or more so if you don't have proper sanitary towels it means for that uh, period you are not going to go to school and you'll miss out what will happen at the end of the year you will fail i made a joke i think i'm not sure whether i think it was last month when the the PT president was showing off the new condoms, there's Max condoms, the flavored ones. So I said, what's the use? Because, you know, every, sex is a choice, you know. If you decide not to have sex, you can stay, you will not die. We haven't seen any person who has died because she or he abstained. So why would the government 
invest so much money in condoms. Meanwhile, sanitary towels, it, it's for me, it, it, it's, 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 it's a must because you don't have a choice. If you are a woman, you will have periods. It's not that easy to, to talk about those kind of things, like, because, yeah, it's not easy, like, Lula, like, about sex, no, 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 it's not that easy. Sit down, talk about pregnant, no, it's not that easy. Talk about boyfriend, sometimes you, like, you get a, a boyfriend and stuff, no, they don't talk about that. The only thing that they talk about is that you have to study and be successful. It's a topic that is not spoken about at home. The mothers don't speak about it, the fathers don't speak about it. The girls don't have someone that they can rely on to talk to if they've got a problem. And of course the schools aren't equipped to do it properly. So within the, cult within the culture and within the schools, it is a problem for the girls. They've got no one to rely on. So when we are going into schools and educating the girls, and all the questions they're asking us, it's very evident that they are not educated on sex, menstruation, personal hygiene. Then you are uneducated, you are not empowered because education is power. If you are educated, no one will take your education away. You will be self-reliant, you will depend on yourself. No one will just drive you around because you, if, if, if you talk, that person will not buy food for you. If you go and report domestic violence, that person will be arrested and no one will be buying food for you. You are self-reliant. So it's very important to roll out this program of sanitary towers, especially in schools. When we first started going into the schools to hand out the packs, the girls were asking us all sorts of questions like, where does the blood come from? Does something get cut inside you every month? So we realized that they were not educated on the female reproductive organs, on the menstrual cycle. So we've put together a whole educational program. So when we go into the schools, we can educate the girls on their bodies and puberty. They've got to grow from a young girl to a woman. We have an apron that we use, which is very um, hands-on. So it'll just explain puberty and what's happening in the female body through puberty. We also have our medical model that we use to explain so it's visually uh, 3D for the girls so they can see depth of it and the, how the female reproductive organs are sitting in the pelvic bone. So we explain to them that they have three holes, what it looks like in depth and that the female reproductive organs are housed between the bladder and the colon and it's very awesome because it opens up so the girls can see exactly where the uterus is so the egg goes from the ovary down the fallopian tube and into the uterus they can see the bloody build up and then obviously here is the vagina so the penis will go in the vagina the male will ejaculate and the semen will swim up into the uterus there will be an egg in there and if it is the egg is in there then it will be fertilized and it will develop into a baby if not when it's the time, then the uh, hormones will be released and the bloody lining comes away from the uterine wall and down and out through the vagina and that is a period, that is your menstruation. Even if we are on a period, we are not even allowed to, to cook or to walk around uh, the family and stuff because like it's something dirty. Like they, if they see you like you are on a period, they don't even allow you to touch the food that they are going to eat because they, you are like, you are on the period, so you don't want anything that includes you and your blood thing that is coming out on you. So you just need to stay there, alone, just, you, you see, like, with nobody, just write your homework. That's what they used to say, go and write your homework. Go and we'll, we'll give you the food, just go there. Just don't, you don't watch TV, you don't do anything, just stay away from them. If, if, if you go 
to the Bible, you will find out that if you were on periods, you were regarded as unclean. Maybe the point of entry will be telling them that no, it, it's, it's what you have to go through as a woman. You know, it's not that you are unclean. It's what you have to go through each and every month. Cleanliness and periods. No, it's two different things. I would say approximately 4 million girls in South Africa that are on the lower LSM bracket that do not have access to sanitary pads. So that has a huge impact on our population. I've only managed in six years, I don't want to say only managed because I think it's quite an achievement to distribute about 60,000 packs. But saying 60,000 girls compared to 4 million that need it, we need a lot more assistance. And I really think that these girls do need help. One of the schools, for example, that we started the intervention in was a primary school. We brought pads, it started creating another problem, disposing of the pads. Now all of a sudden, because remember the toilets are not conducive to the problem. Now the young girls, it's actually more private to go and sit as Gangen in the felt to dispose of your pads. Now I had created another problem. There were pads lying around the whole school. So you see, so um, now we're actually starting to think about interventions that are environmentally friendly. Now I'm interested in looking at the washable pad option because we have to think about those things. So when I realised that these girls didn't have sanitary pads and the effect and the impact it would have on their lives, I knew I had to do something to help them. I mean, uh, having two daughters of my own and thinking what would they do if they didn't have sanitary pads and especially being dyslexic, who missed school, it would take extra long to catch up. When I designed the panty pad for the girls, we knew that we had to have a panty and a pad. So I designed a panty first that had a built-in pad, but that wasn't user-friendly and it was very messy to putting it on and off. So, um, and also a young girl wouldn't want blood on her legs when she's changing the panty and it would have been costly because every time you wanted to change it was a full it was a panty and a pad. So then we changed to a panty that had a built-in gusset and the pad slipped into the gusset, but that also was very fiddly and it wasn't user friendly for girls as young as nine who are using it. It's got to be simple and easy to use and a quick change. So we came that idea and then we came up with the final idea, which is what we have now, the subs, pants and pads, which are in the management pack. So when we're giving this to the girls, we are teaching them about managing their lives. So it is the management pack, but we are giving them a tool that they are now in control of their lives. So how it works is the pad obviously has two sides. The one side is a hydrophobic that the blood will go through and keep the body dry. Inside are the hydrophilics, which are the absorbent fabrics, and then there's a plastic layer under the cotton. So the hydrophobic needs to go against the skin. It just easily clips into the panty. Very simple, very user friendly. The girl will wear it for three to six hours depending on her flow. When she needs to change, she just pops it off and puts another one on. As the president can highlight that this is a problem, we need to work together, governments and private uh, companies. We need to work together to address this issue so that we make sure that our young girls, they don't miss one day in school because of the lack of sanitary uh, towels. I think uh, what is needed to be done here yeah special to schools and to the, to, and to the parent as well. For the parent as well, they have to be included there. They have to teach us about three things, that um, about pregnant, sex, and also the, the, the periods. Because these things, they, they click. Uh, it's high time that we involve men, even in the issues of uh, periods menstruating and stuff because if you are a father this is your child you need to understand what is going on in her life as well my dad bought pads it actually demystified that i remember um we were on holiday my mom had gone back to mtata and we were in the town of pots and johns woke up in the morning like any other young girl your period sometimes creeps up on you i had to wake up and go wake up my dad because we were in a holiday home we have to drive to town and Seeing his reaction and feeling his reaction was the most freeing thing to me. He wasn't freaked out. 
it was the natural thing to do. He knew exactly what to do and where to go. So it was, uh, it was nothing funny. You know, when we're going back to schools where we have given the girls the pads, seeing how they've enjoyed them, how they have stayed in school, how they've developed, their, their passing, they've been able to play sports. You know, the impact on their life is far greater than just giving a girl a sanitary pad. You're uplifting her, you're giving her a personality. You know, you're letting her be who she is. A woman.